Could you introduce yourself to everyone out there? Yeah, so my name is Pratik Nayak. Um, I'm an editorial and commercial retoucher that has been working in the industry for about 10 years now, coming up next year. So um, I work on everything from beauty, fashion, um, headshots, boudoir, and whatever personal projects people have as well. So. Do you do freelance stuff? Yeah, so um, I have both my own agency um, that I have employees that work for me as part of my agency when times get really busy. But most of our stuff is freelance, so we work with photographers on an individual basis as well as other agencies that are looking for commercial work um, and even magazine photographers and the whole kit and caboodle. Yeah, I feel like you've done really a little bit of everything. So, um, again, for those who don't know, Pratik is a retoucher. He's a professional retoucher and I really thought that this would be a great video because I've seen your work and a lot of people ask me about retouching. Um, I'm going to be showing you guys some examples of Pratik's work. Is there any specific genre that you prefer to work on for photography? I like um, fashion a lot because the fact that you get really creative with how your outfits are, your color toning, you know, the styling, the emotion that you get from it. Sometimes when you work with other uh, genres of photography, it gets a little bit um, not as creative because, you know, when you work with fashion, people put a lot of their joy and passion behind it. So the end result is also much more fun to be working with. Do you strictly retouch or do you color grade too? So do you just do the, the face retouching or do you add colors and stuff? I do both. So sometimes photographers come to me and they like doing their own color work, which I prefer them doing it because with color it's very personalized. Um, so, you know, the photographers that are specific in what they want, I'll do just the skin work or just, you know, cleaning up. And then the photographers who have absolutely no idea of how they want to color tone, I'll also help them give them suggestions like, okay, I think this would be also nice. Um, but it's usually if they have no idea what they're doing, then I'll jump in. So it, it just depends on who I'm working for. Could you actually tell us what some mistakes big beginners should avoid when retouching? Because I know a lot of people just don't know what to do on that front. Yeah, so usually I think that if you're a beginner with retouching or if you're a photographer looking to start retouching more seriously, a mistake that, uh, or at least few mistakes that I think people make is number one, when you're actually shooting on set, make sure that you're taking a second look and getting everything right. So for example, if you um, get a makeup artist to do your makeup, double check the makeup so that everything looks perfect before going into retouching because a lot of notes that I get are from people who want a lot of cleanup with makeup when you could have actually looked um, at the makeup on set to And just check. fix that. Yeah, you could fix it right then and there. And, the and save like 20 minutes so of retouching. <laughs> Especially if you have like six looks and you have to fix the same problem. Because you know, I mean, files these days are so detailed and length sharp that <laughs> you see every single pore. Yeah, you do. You see everything. So that's number one. It saves you a lot of money and time. And it's cheaper when you hire a retoucher as well. Is um, it? Oh, yeah. A lot. A lot cheaper. Because people just like look and double check and they fix it right then and there. You save like 20 minutes in image sometimes just fixing those things. It's like $20. Yeah, you do. You save Go buy some dollars. food. Yeah. You can, you can splurge on your whole team, you know. Or I, hire a <laughs> You can like get everyone bagels, get yeah, like specialty it, cream cheese. They'll come back to you every single time because of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, are, is there any general tips that you could give beginner retouchers? Because I know, I mean, if anyone knows anything about retouching, it's you, so. Yes, um, keep studying. I would say study, um, study the right inspirational sources. So don't look at, say, your friends who are starting to retouch, but look at Vogue or look at Elle. Mm -hmm. you know, look at campaigns that are happening right now because if you're looking at the most up-and-coming trends of how retouching is done, mm -hmm. you're already one step ahead by, you know, instead of looking at your competition who's stuck in the past and looking at past inspiration and past editorials, you want to look at what's current. You know, one thing that I noticed, and when I was first starting out as a photographer, I used to just take out all the lines under the, you know what I'm talking about, like under yeah. eyes, there'll be no pores, nothing. But yeah. now, I'm sure as a retoucher you can agree that now agencies look at very natural faces, even if there's a little bit of fine lines you can see and a little bit of pores, they actually like that. They prefer the natural retouch. They do, because I think everyone, when 
went so far that when somebody actually just kept <laughs> natural <laughs> picture, picture they were like, wow, this person is actually keeping a human being in a photograph. So let's go <laughs> it looks like a real person. <laughs> so doing less is sometimes a lot more useful than overdoing it. So you would advise someone to yeah. not retouch every line on the face and under the eyes and stuff. I would say keep a lot of that human element because, I mean, you know, it's it's natural tendency to want to go and overdo something. Yeah. You can do it, you know what I mean? But don't do it just because you can. Just keep a lot of that human element. Don't worry about other photographers and what they're going to say. Just worry about the fact that they still look human. And, and <laughs> they still look human. Your audience is ad agencies, your audience mm -hmm. is model, you know, you know, people who are working at these agencies. So look at, look at the comp cards they're using. Yep. Look at the... Look at the details they're keeping. Don't look at your other photographers. Look at the people who You're are right. You. Yeah. What is your favorite technique for retouching? I think right now my favorite technique is going back and revisiting the common tools like dodging. Oh bringing. God, dodging bringing is everyone's nightmare. By the way, a lot of people leave comments like, "I don't have time to do this." So, what would you say to those people? I would say make the time. <laughs> That's, I'm one of those people. I'm one of those people. <laughs> Because when you, I mean, in the beginning, it's going to take a lot of time, but then what happens in the end is actually ends up being quite quick. You know, it's, it's like kind of Really? Like, yeah. Because it's so now, hard though. For me, I only spend like maybe 20 minutes and yeah, because you know, when you're working with um, really high end people, they expect the best. And if you're going to be the best, you have to practice the best things. Um, and people know, like if you, if you, you know, blur skin and stuff like that, or, you know, like let's say you keep the texture but blur a lot of skin, what happens is you change an, the anatomy of the skin and there's no real way of... You're like, right. No, no, you're right. The shadows and stuff like that. So I'll give you an example. Like let's say you have like a casting director looking at your work and if, if they see something they don't like, they're not going to tell you, they're just going to skip you. So you really? Control. Yeah, they're not going to waste time. They're just going to be like, ah, uh, this is not the right portfolio. I'm going to look at another photographer. Agencies so, really do that? Yeah. I'm I mean, scared. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, I mean, think about it. Like, I'll give you an example. Um, I post a lot of work on Facebook and Instagram. And so I get contacted by some creative director saying, hey, I like the work you post on Instagram. Let's work together. But had I posted something that wasn't, you know, to their standard, would, yeah. they, would they have contacted me? Maybe not. So it's kind of one of those things, you know? What do you think about the frequency separation technique? Because that's one that I mostly use. I, I can't dodge and burn. Yeah. Well, I would say if you if your clients don't mind, then it's fine. But if it's something that your clients are saying they want this, then at least be able to do both things. So it's like okay. you, know when, you know when to use what. Like sometimes it could be quicker in some parts, so you can combine both elements and you know see how you want to um, piece those two together. But if you're going to be just strictly a retoucher, you should be able to you know, be able to do everything. From yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. I, I like, tried to do dodge and burn. I just, it was too difficult. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. And I tried for months and I just couldn't do it. Maybe there's a part of my brain missing, but. I think you need, I think you need someone like me to come and see exactly what you're doing wrong. <laughs> be like wrong, like, Jessica, yeah. wrong. <laughs> and like help you fix what you're having a hard time with. Because it's really difficult. You know, it's like kind of like being a doctor. It's going to take a long time. <laughs> it, it really does. Photoshop doctor. <laughs> Yeah, you, like a you gotta save that image's life. Yeah, there you go. You, you gotta go bring, you gotta bestow the back, <laughs> the soul of the image. Um, do you have any other tips for someone who's retouching, yes. in general? I would say if when you're retouching, um, take breaks. So, um, you know, if you think you're done, you're not done. If you're done, <laughs> so you're just never done. You're just never just done. don't leave your computer. Exactly. Just. <laughs> You know, finish the image, save it, come back the next day, and then revisit it with sh fresh eyes because you're going to see something that you miss. I even do this now. Whenever I finish an editorial, I'll take a break, come back the next day before delivering it, and then, you know, fix anything that I've missed, mm -hmm. and then I'll deliver it. So that way, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure that whatever it is I've done is what I want to deliver. Um, I think that's, I don't know, is there anything else that you want to add that maybe, like, people don't know about? Retouching? Yeah. Yes, I would say right now, you know, like we were talking about, images have gotten so detailed that, you know, we want to, we ha have an emphasis of going too far in everything. Oh, yeah, over editing and stuff like that. Yeah, so I would say don't zoom in 100%. <laughs> okay. Stay zoomed like, out. That's a good tip. <laughs> like hurting my eyes, it's like up to here. <laughs> yeah, because you're going to.
going to start seeing texture that you wouldn't even need to fix because think about it the images you post are for facebook that's print. true yep and you know those even those eight by tens you're not going to see those details at 100 <laughs> percent on your screen <laughs> there's so, a pore that needs to be yeah, retouched uh, yeah so fix the things that you could see zoomed out like at you know fit to screen if you hit like command zero on your keyboard it's going to fit the image on your screen in photoshop and that's kind of the that's kind of what you're going to see in print so you know circle those things that are having issues and fix those things and then leave the rest for later okay like, that's the biggest thing um, I, I think I, I think I do that. <laughs> like yeah. Zoom it all the way. Um, I will actually be getting. Um, do you have any recommendations for retouching tutorials? Because I want to link those for anyone who wants to learn dodge and burning. Um, yeah, you know, I made a I made a video for Creative Live that has a lot of the techniques I think people should know. Okay. Know, because now a lot of techniques out there are um, not as effective or efficient, and I want to make something that everyone could follow along. No okay, that's how. great. That I, that it is, so, you know. so I will link that video then. Yeah, perfect. And on any other recommended videos? Yeah, I like if, that. A lot. If you have any like random cat videos that you like, we'll link those too. I'll link that. So, last question: What's your favorite animal and why? <laughs> I think I think my favorite animal out of everything um, is a wolf. Okay, See? they're they're pretty violent. Just by the way, they like I would say, I attack would say people non, at a night. Violent wolf. How about that? Okay. So those exist. You mean a dog? <laughs> you mean a dog? Yeah. No. Because you know what? Wolves are good by themselves. So it's like they're independent. So it's like an independent okay. dog. Let's go with that. What about people who over retouch the eyes? Because I've seen people who like go in and then do like a super white yeah. eye and it's too super much. Super white eye. So okay. You know what I'm talking about, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so okay. Think about it like this. Whenever you're retouching your photograph, Think about it as if you're on set that day. Like, if you're gonna change um, exposure in certain parts of the image, um, it has to look realistic. So, in real life, if you couldn't do that, then don't do it in post. So, if you can, in real life, brighten just the eyes by using some kind of spot umbrella or whatever it is, okay. then don't do it in post because it's not gonna make sense. You know, we're photographers, we can see when light is different. So, it's the same thing in post production. If you look at a photograph and just the eyes are bright but nothing else, then it's gonna look very bizarre. And that style is long gone. Like that was a style. We could bring it back, though. No, please don't. don't we bring it we back. could totally do it. <laughs> Me and you should start the movement. Like, <laughs> you know, what? we should bring it back to the days whenever we had like those that pageant retouching with like the eighties. Oh like, my god. The glamour oh. retouching. Oh god. Yeah. You yeah. you would love Japan then they have those photo booths and I got my skin re everything I got huge eyes like up to here. Uh -huh. I went to a Japanese or Asian supermarket and I, they still have those ads there in their products. It's amazing. I, I it's love beautiful. It. We should. Yeah, that's be. It's beautiful. Go Japan. <laughs> I love Japan. So basically, I'd recommend going to Japan if you're that's your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I would say you know what, have fun with it. Don't get bogged down too much. You know, at the, at the end of the day, we're all having fun with this. And at the end of the, the main thing is you got to be. You have to approve it yourself. Self approval. As long as you're happy with it, like. Who are we to say? Okay, so thank you for being in this interview, even though it's on the internet and you're not actually here, but for doing it on the internet. Um, and again, if any commenters would like to ask critique anything, please leave your comments below. And thank you guys for watching. I don't know if you want to say any last words. Uh, no, thank you guys as well. Thank you, Jessica, for having me. She's really sweet. And oh, hopefully thank we can you. get some more guests on the show for other awesome interviews. <laughs> I love how you said on the show. Like, I feel so special. This is the Jessica show. Come on now. Okay. It's kind of like the Amanda show. <laughs> yeah.